Hello friends, in this video we are going to see how the triangular wave is generated by using op amp. So let's begin with the topic. We know that operational amplifier is basically used to perform various operations which includes addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and that's why it is named as operational amplifier. In addition to this, operational amplifier is also used to produce the various waveforms which includes square wave, sawtooth wave, triangular wave. So in this video, we are going to see one of the application of operational amplifier that is nothing but triangular wave generator. So let's begin with the circuit diagram. So the circuit of triangular wave generator basically consists of two circuits which is nothing but the square wave generator and integrator. Square wave generator produces square wave at the output and we know that integrator is a circuit which produces triangular wave if input is applied as a square wave. So when these two circuits combine together, we will get triangular wave at the output. So let's understand the working of circuit. So first, we will understand the working of square wave generator. Square wave generator is also called as free running multivibrator or a stable multivibrator. Now in this circuit, the voltage here we are considering the non-inverting terminal of the op amp is equal to V1 and inverting terminal of the op amp is considered as V2. Voltage on the capacitor is considered as Vc. Now as the capacitor C is connected to the inverting terminal of the op amp, we can say the voltage at terminal V2 is nothing but the voltage across capacitor or else we can write V2 is equal to Vc. Because of some input offset voltage, some output offset voltage will be present at the output terminal of the op amp. That is nothing but VO1 and due to which some non-zero value will be present at terminal V1. So we can say the differential output voltage becomes equal to therefore we can say VD is equal to V1 minus VC also. Now initially let's assume that the voltage on the capacitor is equal to 0. That's why Vc is now equal to 0. So we can say that Vd is now only depend upon the value of V1 that means voltage present at non-inverting input terminal of the op amp. So let's understand how the circuit operate during the interval 0 to T1. So if we look at the waveform properly, so here the waveform of square wave generator is given and integrator is given. So right now we are considering the waveform only to the square wave generator. So this is the output of the square wave generator and we are considering first interval 0 to T1. So initially we are assuming that the voltage on the capacitor is equal to 0. So as voltage on the capacitor is equal to 0, the output of the op amp is now depend upon the value of Vd which is equal to V1. So we can say the op amp is drive to positive Vsat. So Vd drives the op amp to positive Vsat and this will charge the capacitor to a value that is beta into positive Vsat. When voltage across the capacitor increases to beta into positive Vsat then when voltage across capacitor increases more than beta into Vsat the op amp goes back to the negative saturation. So here at even when voltage across capacitor increases beyond beta into Vsat, the output make transition from plus Vsat to minus Vsat. Now during 0 to interval time interval, capacitor will charge through a resistor R to Vc. Now during interval T1 to T2, when output of the op amp is minus Vsat, the discharging of capacitor will take place and the capacitor will discharge to a value minus beta into Vsat. So when value across the capacitor decreases below beta minus beta into Vsat, again the output make transition from minus Vsat to plus Vsat. So in this way, the op amp make transition from plus Vsat to minus Vsat and accordingly the capacitor charging and discharging takes place and we will get square wave at the output. Now this square wave is applied as input to the integrator circuit. We know that integrator is a circuit which produces triangular wave VO2 is equal to minus 1 upon R1 CF integration V in T into DT. This indicates that the output is integration of the input signal. Now if we look at the circuit diagram properly then we will know, come to know that the integrator circuit used in the diagram is a practical integrator circuit. 
This is because the resistor R4 is connected in the feedback path parallel to the capacitor C, which makes the circuit as a practical integrator circuit. Now, moving towards the effect of frequency on the output of the triangular wave generator. If the frequency is get increases, then on time and off time, that means the charging and discharging time of the capacitor is get reduced, and that will also reduces the amplitude of the waveform. Similarly, if the frequency is get reduced, then charging and discharging of the capacitor takes more time, and that will cause distortions in the output. So, if the frequency is get increased, then amplitude of the triangular waveform is get reduced, and if, if the frequency is get reduced, that means at low frequency, the distortion is get introduced in the output waveform due to the long charging and discharging time of capacitor. By combining square wave generator and integrator circuit, and the frequency is selected in a such a way that it should not provide the long discharging and charging time and not reduce the amplitude of the output waveform. So I hope you understand this topic of triangular wave generator by using op-amp. So thank you very much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikira. Subscribe Ikira. Thank you.